Hi everyone, it's Wesley with 22 Zines. Today I'm going to be talking about the phrases feminine energy and masculine energy as we often hear them in reference to tarot decks. Um, I'll let you know just right now before I start anything, I have a ton of notes on this because this is something that is um, very important to me and I want to make sure that I am speaking clearly. <laughs> um, so I'm going to be glancing at my notes a whole lot. Um, yeah. The the phrase feminine and masculine energy, or the phrases feminine and masculine energy, are really common to refer to tarot decks or um, particular cards in tarot decks or to describe something that a tarot deck helps us connect to. And as a trans person, these phrases of feminine and masculine energy make me really uncomfortable. Um, and can be really alienating because I know that my views on gender are different and my own gender is not cis. <laughs> so um, I've heard a lot of people say sort of in, in response to potential discomfort or actual discomfort uh, that feminine and masculine energy are just archetypes and we're not actually talking about gender. And that has always struck me as odd, because if we aren't talking about gender, then why are we using words that is incredibly gendered to describe these archetypes? Uh, so what I'm going to try to dissect here is, one, what are we really talking about um, by feminine and masculine energy? What is it that we're trying to refer to? And why do we tend to use gendered terms for it? And I'm going to suggest that there are probably some better ways to get at what we're talking about that are more clear and in ways that don't use unnecessarily gendered language. First, I want to talk a little about why unnecessary gendering is harmful. Um, this is a really important topic because whether we mean to or not, using gendered terms unnecessarily can be very alienating to uh, everyone, honestly, but especially to trans, uh, gender nonconforming, gender queer, really like queer people of all kinds. Um, and so I want to take a second to talk about why it can it can be that, and how I tend how I personally tend to feel when I'm encountering these terms out in the wild. <laughs> when I hear someone use the phrase feminine energy or masculine energy in a video about tarot then there's a bunch of thoughts and feelings that immediately pop into my head. The first is uh, feeling perhaps defensive or possibly unsafe. Um, because if I don't know what people mean by the terms or what exactly they're trying to say, um, which is going to happen a lot unless people are going to take the time every single time to outline feminine and masculine, but here's what I mean by it. I don't actually mean it to refer to gender. I'm super supportive of trans people, blah, blah, blah. It kind of leaves me, you know, which of course that never happens every single time and it shouldn't because it's, you know, it's distracting, it's unnecessary, and it doesn't really help that much when you add all these disclaimers. Um, <laughs> so, but the point is that, um, it kind of leaves me questioning a little bit. It leaves me wondering why are these people using these terms? You know, are they actually supportive of trans or non-binary people? Do they have harmful viewpoints? Are they a turf? Like, are they are they a gender essentialist in some way? Is there some reason that they are choosing to use these terms, uh, feminine and masculine energy that? Um, is telling me something about their viewpoint, about their general beliefs that could be potentially unsafe for me as a trans person. That's kind of the first, um, the first thing that pops into my head. Uh, the next feeling that pops into my head is just one of confusion, <laughs> where it's kind of a lot of work for me to figure out what they actually mean by that, what point they are trying to make, uh, what what they're actually trying to refer to, why it's important for them to make this point or or to say this, that a deck or a card gives off feminine or masculine energy. Um, are they referring to an aesthetic vibe? Are they talking about some literal energy or a platonic form? Are they talking about an archetype? How do they view those things? What is that supposed to mean? Um, why is all this, why is this energy gendered? Is there some reference to divinity? Am I supposed to, un am I even supposed to understand any of this? Am I supposed to understand what they mean by 
energy? Is it really as simple as them just meaning to use the word feminine and adding the word energy on as sort of new age colloquial slang? Um, yeah, so it's just, it's a lot, it's a lot of confusion when I inter encounter these terms. Um, and these terms also feel very othering. Um, even if people are supportive of trans and non-binary people, and even if I know the person personally and they're using these terms, and I know that they're supportive of trans and non-binary people, um, this language often makes it feel like they don't or won't really understand me. Uh, it kind of makes me feel a bit like an outsider in the room, and, and the you know, as someone who doesn't really have a, an... As someone who who has an understanding of femininity and masculinity that is um, pretty distinctly different from our cultural norms, then um, to sort of be reminded, I guess, of these cultural norms in a context that I don't, you know, where it's not especially important or relevant, then I don't know. It's just sort of an extra reminder that's unnecessary to that um, my my understanding experience and everything is different from the norm, and that can be kind of alienating. Um, it's not a bad thing in itself to be different from the norm, obviously. Uh, being different and being yourself is really important, and expressing your own opinion and your own feelings are important, but there's sort of that difference between uh, cultural enforcement of cultural standards and, um, you know, trying to carve out a space, carve out spaces where I feel that I can express myself freely outside of these cultural standards. And so every time that I encounter one of these terms of like feminine or masculine energy, often the, the way that they're used, it's sort of that extra reminder about like, oh, you know, okay, I'm different from this person. And it's just, you know, it's othering, it's distancing, I guess. It, it, makes me feel like the the sort of outsider in the room who now it's you know I'd perhaps like to shyly raise my hand and say you know what what if I don't feel that way um yeah so I'll just sum that up was that it can feel othering to encounter these terms and um it can also not only just feel othering but it can feel very exclusive and I can end up feeling kind of invisible um in the sense that when you're using these binary terms of feminine and masculine, even if you do think of third things or think think of things that it's like both slash neither, um, it feels like the both slash neither components of it are not acknowledged and are not, not brought up and not really acknowledged nearly as often. And so it is... Um, it, it it makes you feel invisible. I I should say me. <laughs> it makes it often makes me feel invisible. Um, yeah. So that's kind of how I feel when I'm encountering these terms. And in general, I would say that most people in the tarot community are very very accepting of trans, queer, and gender nonconforming people. Uh, and I really genuinely believe that most people don't really mean to use the words feminine and masculine or feminine and masculine energy to, uh, they don't mean to use them in a way that would exclude certain people or expressions intentionally. Uh, but I want to remind people that it is possible to do harm without bad intent. It's possible to reinforce harmful societal norms, even when you disagree with those norms. So anything that we can do to, um, to stop enforcing norms, especially ones that we don't agree with or ones that are going to be othering to people that we would like to, you know, be supportive of. Anything we can do um, to change those, to change those terms and to stop doing harm is going to be a good thing. And that's going to be more reflective of our own beliefs and the environment that we want to create. The terms feminine and masculine may feel divorced from gender to you. But in general, in our culture, they are clearly very strongly gendered. And so using feminine and masculine language reinforces the gender binary and using them to describe energies, especially energies that are often considered to be opposites, reinforces the idea that femininity and masculinity are opposites. And using femininity to refer to things such as 
pink color schemes or even just general concepts of receptivity and masculine to describe things such as aggressiveness or action does reinforce patriarchal gender roles. And it does reinforce stereotypes that are harmful to everyone, even if you do not actually believe in these um, societal norms and stereotypes and gender roles. The tendency can be to keep saying feminine energy, but it's not really about gender. Everyone has feminine and masculine traits within them. It's not a sexist thing. And even if you're non-binary, you're agender, you have these traits because it's an archetype, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> but a bunch of disclaimers does not eliminate the problems of using unnecessarily gendered language. And I really think that it's better to try and change our language to more clearly express what we mean, rather than rigidly sticking to our language and trying to convince other people of this new definition. Uh, you don't have to explain yourself, and you don't have to add all these disclaimers, if you use a term that is clearly divorced from gender to begin with, um, rather than constantly having to explain yourself. And I think that when you drill down to what you're actually intending to refer to with phrases like feminine energy and masculine energy, you will find that the gendering really is unnecessary and, and unhelpful. And it's definitely not worth alienating genderqueer people over. So what do we mean when we use the phrases feminine energy and masculine energy? One way that I see the terms frequently used is to describe tarot decks aesthetically, like saying it looks feminine or it seems to feel feminine in its art style or its depictions. Um, just as like quick examples, some decks that I've heard described as having feminine energy are the Intuitive Night Goddess tarot, uh, the Modern Witch tarot, the Mother Peace tarot, the Nicoletta Ciccoli tarot, uh, the Moonchild and Starchild tarots, and naturally <laughs> the Divine Feminine tarot. Um, and this is just kind of to show the, the range of decks that this term often applies to. So I want you to consider what is it about these decks aesthetically that unites them all as feminine? What is it about each of these decks that you could say you know, this, this deck has feminine energy. Uh, because it's not like all of these decks are following the 90s toy aisle rules of being super pink and glittery and sparkly and therefore feminine and for girls. They all have very different styles and color schemes and all that. One thing that they kind of have in common is they all feature a lot of, um, or exclusively, feminine presenting figures. So maybe people mean feminine energy uh, to say that the deck has predominantly feminine presenting figures. I also should note that by that people usually seem to mean figures that are or could easily pass as cis women. And so to try and illustrate what I mean here, I want to take a quick look at a card from the Dame Darcy Mermaid Tarot. The page of ones here would probably not be described as a feminine presenting figure. They do not have noticeable breasts, they have a slight Adam's apple, they have a buzzed haircut, and they are wearing rather generic gender neutral uh, t-shirt and hat. And so based on how our society typically genders bodies and typically genders clothing, we would say that this is not a feminine presenting figure. Because it's a drawing, and we can't learn more about their gender from the image alone. You know, it's not like we could talk to them and say, hey, what's your gender drawing? Uh, then in tarot, at the very least in tarot, the term feminine presenting is really the observer making a judgment about what the figure's gender is. But really, there's no reason that this figure couldn't be a trans woman or uh, a woman who uh, doesn't easily pass or perhaps isn't really trying to pass. There's no reason that they couldn't be non-binary. Yeah. So really in the tarot, at the very least, when we say feminine presenting, we really mean looks like what we expect a cis woman to look like in one way or another. And 
all of that is not necessarily a bad thing. Um, you know, it's somewhat, it's perhaps somewhat unavoidable unless you want to refer to every, unless you want to try and perceive every single card as gender neutral. Um, you know, it's not automatically a bad thing to, um, look at a drawing and, and make a judgment about that drawing's gender. Um, it's just something that I want to point out, <laughs> uh, is that when we say feminine presenting, especially in this context, we mean looks like, you know, a cis, looks like, has, has many qualities of what we would expect a cis woman to look like. So, anyway, <laughs> when we're using the term feminine energy to describe a deck that has predominantly feminine presenting figures, I want to ask, does that make sense? When you say feminine energy, are you really saying that the figures look like cis women? Would you be just as willing to say the deck had feminine energy if you clocked the figures as trans women? And is there a reason that you might be tending to say the deck has feminine energy as opposed to simply saying that the deck has mostly women featured in it? Um, do you think that you would get the same point that you're trying to make across if you just said, this deck has what looks like mostly women figures. Um, and if so, <laughs> if what you mean by, if, if you feel that you would get the same meaning across, then I would encourage you to use that phrase to just say, this deck has what looks like mostly women figures or something thereabouts, uh, rather than feminine energy, because, um, it, if for literally no other reason than for the increased clarity. If it's something else about the aesthetics of the deck, um, not just the perceived gender of the characters on the cards, then I want to ask, what is it that makes a deck feminine to you? Is it a color scheme, use of certain symbols? I, you know, what, what sort of thing makes it feel feminine to you? And I want to encourage you to do a little exercise <laughs> and actually jot down some notes on what it could be that makes a deck feel feminine to you. Um... I went ahead and did that with the Moonchild Tarot, because I think that is a deck that is often described as a deck with feminine energy, and it's sort of very easy to see why uh, from an aesthetic point of view, um, because we often ascribe a lot of these aesthetics to femininity, or, or, or ascribe femininity to these aesthetics. So I wrote them down here of just like um, a few things that might make make you call this deck a fe say that this deck has feminine energy. Um, the deck has a lot of pinks and purples and pastel colors in it. Uh, there are a lot of luxuriant and detailed patterns. There are swirly, wavy shapes. There are flowers and plants. And there's a lot of moon imagery in the deck. Now, I want to consider, is there really anything inherently feminine or inherently masculine about these symbols and aesthetics? Personally, I would say no. With the colors, for example, colors are assigned gender rather arbitrarily. There's nothing about pinks, purples, pastels that makes them inherently feminine. Um, the moon is often considered a feminine symbol in the European world, at the very at least. Um, probably in part because of its association with the menstrual cycle. But um, in thinking about this, I'm thinking, well, I am a man and I have a menstrual cycle, so why would a menstrual cycle be inherently feminine? Uh, and even most people who wouldn't, who <laughs> most people wouldn't consider a cis woman who does not menstruate to be less feminine. Um, so again, even just this association of of the menstrual cycle and the moon are arbitrarily assigned feminine in nature um, or in energy, if you want to say. Uh, yeah, and so and generally, I think a lot of a lot of tarot readers do not want to ascribe certain symbols or aesthetics to one gender or the other. People don't really want to say that pinks and purples are somehow inherently linked to femininity. Um, and if they do, maybe that's something that needs to be examined more deeply, because that's like really old school <laughs> gender liberation 101. Uh, but the point I'm trying to make is that rather than linking any of these aesthetics to femininity, um, perhaps unintentionally, but rather than making that link by saying that the deck has feminine energy, I could instead just describe the aesthetics themselves without gendering them. So 
in describing the Moonchild Tarot, rather than saying, I think it has feminine energy, I could say it uses pastel colors, swirly shapes, and moon imagery. <laughs> And frankly, I think that's better communication because um, giving more clear information about the images of the deck uh, rather than leaving someone to guess what I mean by feminine energy. And it's not automatically gendering things that don't need to be gendered. So it's a win-win. Yeah, so if you tend to use the phrase feminine energy to describe the aesthetics of a deck, I would um, encourage you rather to... Uh, drill down to what about those aesthetics makes you feel that they're feminine, and then just describe the aesthetics themselves rather than putting it under this umbrella of femininity. And obviously all of this goes for masculine too. I'm using feminine as an example. Okay, so let's move on to energy as an archetype. I hear a lot that feminine and masculine are just archetypes. We all have both feminine and masculine qualities in ourselves regardless of gender, um, so it's not really about gender. And so I want to ask, when you use the phrase feminine energy, in uh, tarot especially, what qualities are you actually referring to? What list of things would go in the category of feminine archetype and which in the masculine archetype? Because... I think this will point out that the problem with claiming that feminine and masculine are archetypes is that it's almost never clear or consistent what things should go in the category of feminine and which in masculine. And an archetype is supposed to be something that is universal and not dependent on culture or individual, but simply it appears in different ways. Um, but once you take away all of the cultural or individual expressions of feminine or masculine, then what's left? Is, is there anything that you could say is universally feminine? Is there any idea or feeling or understanding of masculinity that is inevitably shared among all humans? Um, does this concept of femininity really have meaning to everyone? Uh, the big question is, are you interpreting a deck or a card or whatever as having feminine energy because the imagery is representing some universal archetype? Or rather, is the idea of femininity limited to the things that we ascribe to it? So for a more concrete example of this problem as it relates to tarot, I have another little exercise here, which is that I want you to try and make a list of every aspect, every, every, you know, external whatever aspect that you consider part of feminine energy and everything that you consider masculine energy. So feminine and masculine are, as we know, often used as gendered shorthand for concepts such as receptivity versus activity, dark versus light, etc. Um, I've made a sample list here of the sorts of things I've heard typically referred to as feminine or masculine in the tarot and witchy context. So I just made two columns here. On the feminine side, we have dark, moon, receptivity, passivity, roundness, flexibility, inaction, submissiveness, watery, cold, and yin. And on the masculine side, we have light, sun, creativity, assertiveness, sharpness, rigidity, action, aggressiveness, fiery, warm, and yang. Um, yeah, so the, uh, and so the umbrella term that's meant to describe all of these concepts in the left column here is feminine. These are all like um, external representations of, of the feminine archetype. And then uh, here, the same with masculine. Um, and so I want to ask, first of all, do all of the things on these individual lists have anything in common that would be better described by a single unifying term of any kind. Um, like some of these things, I can definitely see a pretty clear connection between them. Cold and dark, for example, seem to go very naturally together. Uh, flexibility and watery as well. Uh, but what about like passivity and roundness? Is there anything about roundness that makes it passive or anything about passivity that makes it round? Um, does it make sense to consider roundness or smoothness as being passive? They kind of seem to be describing completely different things. 
So do they actually have something in common? Or are we just sort of arbitrarily putting them in the same category or associating them with feminine energy or like arbitrarily claiming that each of these things has feminine energy? Um, and then what about things like flexibility and inaction? Where those two seem kind of opposed to each other, both of them are in the feminine category, um, but doesn't ref doesn't <laughs> doesn't flexibility require maneuverability and therefore action? Um, should they be united by a common term at all? Are both of those things feminine? Like, can they even share in part of the same uh, energy in the first place? Anyway, uh, these these connections, I guess it just, the, the point of all this is that maybe it doesn't make sense to unite these things or define these things under a single term of any kind. In this case, we're using femininity. Uh, maybe it would be better to simply describe something as feeling watery or lunar or receptive so that you can be more specific and not bring in all of these unrelated or potentially opposing concepts that we often associate with uh, the umbrella of of feminine energy. Anyway, <laughs> but let's say that, you know, we do want to create a link between all these things, or, or perhaps we don't think that a link is really um, implied by, by putting these in the same category. Um, I still want to ask whether feminine energy is really uh, the best word to describe any of these things. Um, and so here's the problem. It's like, there's a couple of problems with using gendered language to describe any of these things. Um, for one, using the terms feminine and masculine as opposites in this way, even if the intended meaning is different, does assert and reinforce a gender binary that is fundamentally in opposition. And so one example of this is that like dark and light or like the moon and the sun are often seen as opposites. And these are very standard things that we consider as being opposed to each other. And so by associating one with femininity and one with masculinity, you're kind of suggesting that femininity and masculinity are also in direct opposition, which is, you know, that that's, that's part of the problem is that it, it enforces this idea that femininity and masculinity are opposites in the same way that these are. And that's not something that we should necessarily commit ourselves to. Um, <laughs> but the even bigger issue and sort of the, the main point, I guess, is that using gendered words in this context is implying that there is this central essence of femininity or masculinity, which all the things in each category share. So all of the things, you know, dark moon, receptivity, whatever, there is some essence of femininity that these things partake in or, or uh, like allow us to see dependent on our culture. But no matter how you define femininity or masculinity, it means making a declaration that certain things aren't feminine or aren't masculine. And you need to ask yourself, can you imagine a people, can you imagine a culture or a person who sees femininity differently, not just in its external representations, but if you were to ask, okay, what is feminine energy at its core? Um, that means that there's got to be something that it's not. And I feel like inevitably there's going to be some people who feel that the thing that it's not is indeed femininity or is contained within femininity in some way. The thing that kind of crystallized my thoughts around masculinity and femininity is the example of the mama bear. In general, <laughs> we think of the archetype of femininity as being passive, receptive, and all these things on the left side of this list. But if you think of a mama bear protecting her cubs, you think of ferocity, action, assertion, anger, and a lot of the things that we have in the masculine category that seem to be in conflict or oppositional to the feminine archetype. So does that make the mama bear a representation of the masculine archetype? And does that really make sense? Uh, yeah. By this point, you might be finding it tricky to put your finger on what 
you mean by feminine or masculine or, or having a hard time coming up with a definition for them. And I think that's because the concepts of feminine and masculine don't have any inherent meaning or qualities all, at all. There isn't some sort of central feminine energy from which all things feminine uh, derive or, you know, if that makes any sense. Um, rather, the terms feminine and masculine are basically like nonsense terms that we're using to describe other things that we individually or culturally associate with predominantly cis women and predominantly cis men. Uh, so, yeah, I, I would, I would like to suggest that the concepts of feminine, feminine and masculine, they don't have a central energy. And so that's why when we say feminine energy, if we are trying to refer to it as an archetype, what we're really talking about is cultural associations with femininity, cultural associations with masculinity. Um, and, and either way, the terms on their own feminine, masculine energy don't end up being very informative, and they definitely don't help us describe experiences or aspects of a tarot deck in a way that will make clear sense and in a way that will feel ungendered, given that everybody sees gender differently. Um, so why, sh why should we keep using them then? So the period on the end of that sentence is that um, if you do see feminine energy and masculine energy as archetypes, then I would uh, challenge you to come up with a definition of what is the core essence of the feminine archetype, what is the core essence of the masculine archetype, and how would you respond to somebody who disagrees? How would you respond, you know, to to somebody who, you know, are those are those associations that you're making actually entirely dependent on culture, or is there some sort of actual fundamental thing? that is true for every single human, regardless of their uh, gender, regardless of their transness or cisness, um, and regardless of how their culture views gender. Because if you can come up with one <laughs> that is actually inclusive of, um, of all trans people, of all people who, um, who see themselves as being feminine or not, then I, I would love to <laughs> I think that you won't be able to, is my point. <laughs> okay. The hardest thing for me to understand is when people refer to feminine energy as a means of referring to the divine feminine. And I think that's something that I just might never understand because I do not have a binary understanding of divinity. Um, and for one, it doesn't help that I'm an atheist, <laughs> but for two, it feels very strange to me to think of divinity as being split in two, as though there would be anything fundamentally different between the divine feminine and the divine masculine, um, that there, that we can know that they exist as two separate things, you know what I mean? Um, and also it feels like it'd be weird that they, you would have a divine feminine and a divine masculine that just so happens to line up with so many of our cultural understandings of human gender. Um, and I wonder if by divine feminine and divine masculine, people are again really trying to say receptive and active, or like a cosmic sperm and egg sort of thing <laughs> and we've uh, and and whether that really is best described with gendered language so if you if you're thinking of it as like a cosmic sperm and egg then often you know traditionally culturally we would associate the uh you know cosmic sperm as being the divine masculine and the cosmic egg as being the divine feminine despite the fact that many men and many people who feel <laughs> entirely masculine have eggs and many people who feel entirely feminine have sperm uh, so this is sort of what I mean about, like, maybe it's not best described using gendered language. But anyway, so I'm, I'm really not trying to debate theology here, because um, that's not going to get me very far, and, it's, and, and there's really no need for it. Um, but for anyone who is committed to a binary divinity of divine feminine and divine masculine, then I'd encourage you to ask yourselves what the difference between the two is, and whether they are both intrinsically whole, or whether they each have limitations that make them distinct from each other. Um, and I guess generally I just want to give some, I, I want to encourage you to give some thought not into just how you feel these energies, but what they actually are. How would you, what is the difference between these energies? How would you define them? And, um, you know, 
anything that you can do to try and detangle human cultural concepts of gender from your concept of divinity, that's what I encourage you to do. In terms of being clear and being supportive of genderqueer people when you're um, categorizing or talking about tarot decks or cards or whatever, um, I think that it might be better just to refer to your actual deity in some way rather than try to use the phrase um, divine feminine, divine masculine, or even, you know, feminine energy, masculine energy. Because some people might see divinity as gendered, some people might see it as binary, others won't. Um, and so rather than trying to make some, rather than trying to construct your sentence in a way that uh, makes some assertion about the deck itself, uh, you could try to center the language around your religious practice. So rather than saying this deck has divine feminine energy, or even I feel divine feminine energy from this deck, you could try to say this deck helps me connect with my goddesses or or this deck connects me with Mother Mary or whatever to just like as a way of making it clear that you're trying to separate this concept of human femininity from uh, non-human femininity and and human I mean I mean really like again I, I just want to remind you that even if you don't intend harm even if you mean to include disclaimers like this is just my understanding of divinity you know, whatever. I, I don't, I'm not talking about human gender. It's like, it can still be harmful in, you know, using this, this binary device, binary language of, you know, divine feminine, divine masculine, masculine energy, feminine energy. Um, it can still be harmful in perpetuating an earthly gender binary and exclusionary to gender queer and non-binary people. And so I guess, um, I guess just, I want to encourage you to keep asking yourself, if there is a divine feminine and a divine masculine, does it need to be described using language that has a lot of connotations with human experiences of gender and could potentially be alienating to humans who experience gender? So I really don't have a nice, easy conclusion for all of these thoughts. Um, the whole point of this has just been me trying to figure out what other people mean by feminine energy and masculine energy. Um, and as someone who really doesn't relate to the idea of energy at all, uh, much less gendered energy, then obviously it's pretty tough. Uh, you might have a completely different idea of what you are trying to express when you say feminine energy than any of these examples that I've had above, which is fine. Um, I just want to encourage you to ask yourself, what in particular are you referring to when you're trying to, when you use the phrase feminine energy or masculine energy? Just imagine me sitting on your shoulder and saying like, feminine energy, what does that mean? <laughs> and ask yourself if your answer, um, or if your use of these terms might be perpetuating something that is harmful or dismissive to trans people, non-binary people, and people who are gender non-conforming. I hope that you're able to take something uh, from this. And I hope that it doesn't feel accusatory. I hope that it encourages you to just um, question some of your old habits or old phrases and um, replace them with some that are better and more supportive for trans and non-binary people in the tarot community. Um, I would definitely love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. No transphobia, no gender essentialism, no exceptions, or you will be immediately blocked. Um, but you know, I trust that you guys aren't going to pull any BS in the comments. So um, I really would love to hear your thoughts. And remember to always be questioning gender and always be questioning gendered language. Thanks very much for watching. Bye. <sighs>